Hey there, Doug here with B&H. Today, we're looking at DJI's newest drone, the DJI FPV Racing Drone. For those of you familiar with racing drones, they're not for the faint of heart. FPV stands for first person view, so in order to experience that, you need to wear special goggles that transmit the image from the camera on the drone directly to your eyes. We'll be pairing our FPV with the DJI Goggles version 2. The FPV can also operate as a regular drone depending on what mode you're in. So even if you don't have FPV experience, you'll still be able to fly. The DJI FPV is a fantastic way for beginner FPV pilots to dip their toes into the water because it essentially offers the best of both worlds. Since the drone can operate in full manual mode and like a traditional Mavic, remote pilots can ease their way into the advanced flying style of FPV and really up the production quality of their aerial videos at the same time. It's crucial when flying an FPV drone for the first time that you spend time practicing in DJI's app-based virtual flight simulator so you can understand just how different the controls are compared to a regular drone. With virtual flight, you'll be able to practice on virtual obstacle courses and gain experience with the flight controls without ever having to leave the ground. With a racing drone, there are no assistance features built in, such as auto hovering or obstacle avoidance. This means every flick of the control stick is crucial in determining how your aircraft will move and respond. Racing drones can also fly at speeds that far exceed normal drones. The FPV can fly at speeds up to a whopping 140 kilometers per hour or 86.9 miles per hour. Operating at those speeds through an obstacle course requires a lot of practice, so I recommend training a little bit before jumping in. The DJI FPV has three distinct operating modes. If you're looking to operate the drone to create content like you would with a Mavic, for example, then you'll need to operate in normal or sport flight modes. Both of these modes feature auto hovering when you release the joysticks on the controllers. Normal mode is the best mode to use if you're a beginner or looking to do some aerial photography or video. Flight will be stable and maneuvering the aircraft will be much easier. When switched into sport mode, flight speeds are increased and cruise control functionality is enabled. When cruise control is engaged, the aircraft will lock in its current speed and maintain that speed until it is disengaged. Sport mode also features the same stabilization, limited obstacle avoidance detection, and auto hovering found in normal mode. Sport also acts as a hybrid mode and a bridge into full manual mode, giving the user a taste of the FPV experience. When operating in manual flight mode, all bets are off. Manual mode allows for a highly customizable experience with limited restrictions on flight speed and aircraft attitude. The drone does not automatically hover in this mode. This is really important if you've never operated an aircraft in manual mode before. It's extremely challenging and does require a high degree of skill. This mode is primarily used for racing and performing freestyle tricks. Manual mode is turned off by default, and even if you accidentally switch into manual mode on the controller, it still has to be turned on via the menu system in the goggles. It's also important to loosen the screws in the back of the controller to prevent the control sticks from snapping back to their home position. Because of the sensitivity of manual mode, an emergency brake and hover button on the controller will allow for immediate flight assistance controls to take over and bring the aircraft to a stable hovering position. When landing, it's important to make sure the aircraft is in normal mode so the assistance features can help. The body of the FPV is a unique, modular design that allows for easy replacement of parts. The landing gear, gimbal, top shell, and propellers can all be detached and replaced easily in case they sustain damage. The size of the FPV may feel similar to a Mavic, but it is different in a lot of ways. The biggest difference to note is that the arms on this aircraft don't fold up for smaller storage. They're fixed in place. The aircraft has forward and downward vision sensors that can automatically detect objects when flying in normal mode, like on other DJI models, but avoidance detection is limited on the FPV. The aircraft will slow down, but it will be up to the pilot to bring the aircraft to a full stop to avoid a collision. In addition to the sensor is a downward facing LED auxiliary light to aid in precise landing. The camera on board the FPV has a 12 megapixel 1 over 2.3 inch CMOS sensor. It features a super wide angle lens with a 142 degree field of view when shooting in 60 or 120 FPS, and a 150 degree field of view when shooting in 50 or 100 FPS to give the footage an action sports feeling. The lens has a fixed aperture of f2.8 with an ISO range of 100 to 3200. 
the shutter speed can go from 1 60th of a second all the way up to 1 8,000th of a second. When in HD mode, the camera can support up to 4K 60fps video with a maximum bitrate of 120 megabits. If you switch into smooth mode, it will support up to 1080p 120fps for smooth and steady slow motion video. Video formats record to MP4 or MOV and support both H.264 and H.265 codecs. And when in picture mode, the camera can capture UHD 4K JPEG stills. The camera also features the Rocksteady electronic stabilizer to further stabilize footage and eliminate rolling shutter effect. The camera is housed in a stabilized gimbal with tilt control located on the remote controller. Just below the gimbal is a micro SD card slot and a USB-C port. The intelligent flight battery in the FPV takes up most of the body and accounts for a fair amount of its weight as well. In zero wind flying conditions, you're likely to get up to 20 minutes of flight time from a single battery. With that said, it may be a good idea to invest in some additional batteries so you can stay out in the field flying longer. With the battery attached, the FPV weighs roughly 1.75 pounds or 795 grams at takeoff. A key component to any FPV drone is a set of goggles so you can see what the aircraft sees. The V2 DJI goggles have two screens inside with a resolution of 1440 by 810 for a clear high-res view from your aircraft. You can toggle between smooth mode and HD mode in the goggles. In HD mode, you'll get improved quality at the same bandwidth, but your image transmission latency increases from 28 milliseconds to 40 milliseconds. You can also set your goggles to audience mode, allowing you to share your flight view with other goggles. On the front of the goggles, you'll find four removable antennas. The V2 goggles support 2.4 and 5.8 gigahertz, and the frequency can be selected automatically. Some locations restrict the usage of 5.8 gigahertz, so 2.4 gigahertz will be used in those instances. When operating in low latency mode, transmission range tops out at 10 kilometers or 6.2 miles for longer distance flights. On top of the goggles, you'll find a record button, a joystick for navigating the goggle menu, and a back button. On the right side of the goggles, you'll find a headphone jack and the input for the power pack. The battery that powers the goggles is attached via a USB-C cable and hangs down. So if you have a pocket, you can store the battery in there. It would be great to see the battery perhaps integrated in a future version of the goggles. On the left side of the goggles is a slot for a micro SD card and a USB-C port for attaching your phone directly to the goggles. The micro SD card allows you to record your transmission feed in the goggles, but the resolution is slightly lower and it doesn't get the benefit of the Rocksteady feature. It's pretty nice having all this information literally right in front of you for rapid decision making and a clean view. That means bright sunlight won't get in the way of seeing the screen. Something to consider though is that since you are wearing goggles, you won't be able to keep an eye on the actual physical location of your drone. It's important to have someone nearby to act as a spotter whenever you're flying while using the goggles. The FPV version 2 controller should feel somewhat familiar to Mavic users. Its redesign gives it the feeling of a video game console controller. What's noticeably absent from this controller though is a place to attach a phone. The FPV is designed to be flown with the goggles and the design of the controller reflects that. On the front, you'll find control sticks for throttle, yaw, pitch, and roll. You'll also find the power control and a multi-purpose button for turning on the auxiliary light. On top of the controller is a large single antenna that flips up when in use, supporting both 2.4 and 5.8 gigahertz frequencies for communicating with the FPV. On the top left is a gimbal dial for pitching the camera up and down, the brake and cruise control button, the return to home button, and the mode switch. On the top right is the manual mode arm button, record button, and a gimbal adjustment switch. On the bottom of the controller is a USB-C input, which is used for charging the internal battery in the controller. A single charge lasts about nine hours. Also on the bottom is a handy little storage area for the control knobs when they're not in use. On the back of the controller, you can access the screws that keep the control sticks in their center position. Now, as I mentioned before, it's important that these screws are loosened when flying in manual mode for the full effect. Another cool device that is going to change how pilots fly with the FPV is the motion controller. It's a small handheld device that lets its users control the aircraft with hand gestures. It almost resembles the controller for a Wii or a Nintendo Switch. With this style of flight control, it opens up a whole new way for pilots to interact with the aircraft. 
This single-handed controller allows you to use wrist and hand motions with the addition of an acceleration trigger to get the most natural feel for piloting the FPV. This DJI FPV will, without a doubt, be a thrill for any pilot ready to tame its high speeds. You better brush up on your skills and get ready for some obstacle courses. So, what do you like best about the new FPV drone from DJI? Let us know in the comments below. I'm Doug with B&H, and I'll see you next time.